2017 Australian Sailing Hall of Fame inductees, Daniel Fitzgibbon and Liesl Tesh. A lifelong sailor, Daniel Fitzgibbon joined forces with Liesl Tesh in 2009. After a boating accident left him a quadriplegic at the age of 21, Fitzgibbon set his sights on the Paralympics, winning a silver medal at the 2008 Beijing Games. However, his desire to go one better saw him pair up with Tesh, a silver and bronze medal Paralympic basketball champion who tried sailing for the first time only months earlier. Despite the insurmountable odds and physical challenges, the pairing blossomed quickly with Fitzgibbon and Tesh winning their first World Cup event after less than a month of sailing together. Dan's incredible sailing knowledge and Liesl's amazing firepower forged an inspirational combination. Sheer hard work and determination resulted in the gold medal at the 2012 London Paralympics. But it was on the challenging waters of Rio where the pair made history becoming the first ever team to win back-to-back -back Paralympic gold medals. Their achievements also made them the first Australian sailing team or crew to defend an Olympic or Paralympic gold medal. Daniel Fitzgibbon and Liesl Tesh, Australian Sailing Hall of Fame inductees in 2017. Well, what a, what a wonderful triumph for both of you. What a recognition. Liesl, what is the, the message you'd like to sing from every hilltop here tonight? Absolutely, just keep loving life and embrace every opportunity. When, when the Sailors with Disabilities call came to try it for the city to Hobart, initially it was no way, you just get killed. And then I read, then I read the email, would you like to come for a Twilight Sail on a 54-foot yacht? Bring it on. And then I wheeled down the wharf to say, how does it feel like to be trailing, trying out? I'm like, no. And we went out through the heads and came back in. And I said, OK, what do I have to do? And spent the first three months and went, like three months sort of pushing people with disabilities off the boat to get the gig. And then when Fitzy rang and said, do you want to come for a sail on one of the Paralympic boats? I thought it was going to be a whole bunch of fun. And I didn't realise, I don't know, a few years later, we'd be sitting up here in this situation. So... Bring it on, embrace every opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> Daniel, you've obviously got an eye for talent. What did you see in this young lady? Young. Mate, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know some, some say it's a good talent, but I know oh, Lisa's an awesome person. And um, I just saw, I had it, got, a, got a silver medal in Beijing, Gordon, and and they sang the Star Bangled banner on those on that day and it really hurt my heart and I said this day, look, it's not my day. I want to ramp up the program. I don't want to win a gold medal and and I was like, I need to find someone who can compliment me and win a gold medal and, and I was watching the television show and I thought, she's such an awesome person, she's strong willed. She's physically strong. She's an awesomely motivated person. And I thought together we can make a great team. And, and um, our chemistry, I'd, I didn't know at the time. I rang her up and said, do you want to come sailing? And, and she's the person she is. Yeah, she had a million things on that day. But yeah, I'll come sailing anyway. And <laughs> she came out and, and we just hit it off straight away. And, and, and I just felt as a team we're very strong, um, stronger than we were as individuals. Five Paralympics before you even contemplated sailing, but you hadn't won a gold medal, am I correct in saying that? Absolutely. When Fitzy made the call, and I realised like both of us have got that same fire in our bellies, that same competitive spirit, um, there's no way in the world that I'm going to not have this incredible journey. And I think for both of us, backing up in Rio was pretty amazing. But when you wait 20 years, when you're fighting for that gold medal and they put that gold medal around your neck, it gives you an in a sense of happiness that you've never felt before that I know both of us still carry with us every single day of our lives. What was the transition like from a very aggressive and brutal at times sport like Bart? There's a lot of, it's supposed to be non-contact, but it's not, you know. <laughs> How was the transition to, to sailing? How easy Oh, mate, it? sitting on the front of Fitzy's boat, it's brutal. It's brutal. <laughs> and then it was fantastic. In Weymouth, I didn't realise that you couldn't really trash talk 
in sailing. So there's times like the, the English guy was standing up out of his seat in Paralympic sailing, you have to sit down in your seat. So I was yelling out and he was really off put by the trash talking I bought into the sport from basketball. So. <laughs> I noticed, Daniel, you're sitting next to uh, Rob Trahan, uh, son of uh, the great Hugh Trahan, and we've got all of these wonderful Australia 2, John Bertrand down in front here, the Australia 2 crew. Were they an inspiration for you as a, as a young sailor? Yeah, Gordon, my first memory as a ch child is my father waking me up in the middle of the night and saying, Daniel, get up, you need to see this. And I've never been up in the middle of the night before. And he took me down to the TV and I watched Australia 2 cross the finishing line and win the America's Cup and that was my first memory as a child and and he went out it inspired him to go out and buy a yacht he bought an Iowa 34 footer and as a child my job was to do the runners on that thing and we all know Iowa yachts are just shocking downwind <laughs> doing a jive in 30 knots and I had to stop the rig going over the front and that was like terrible and but and then swap me again to a sabo and, 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 and it also made me think that look, anything is possible. Like we're just we're all Australians here and and as Australians, these guys have achieved the impossible. Where we've arrived on the world stage and and the feeling I had as a sabo sailor is that well if I keep at this I can achieve what I want to achieve. I can win on the world sta stage and, and and that's really inspired me to push forwards and, and it gave me an inner belief and, and winning a silver medal, I didn't sit on that because I knew as an Australian and as these guys proved in 83 that we could go on and dominate and, and um, in the end we did quite convincingly. Yeah. And in that sense, um, you're, you're unbeaten. You're you can't be defending gold medal champions. You've won the last two gold medals now, back to back. It's never been done before. Um, member for Gosford, a new life for you in Parliament. What does the future hold for Liesl Tesh? Well, it's pretty tough. After seven Paralympics, you come home and you're told that there's no Paralympics in 2020, and I'm on the couch. What am I going to do? So when I got the letter from the previous Member of Parliament, it just comes, usually it goes in the junk mail after you've read it, and I put it on the shelf because I knew my life was going to change, and I'd taken some time after I retired from basketball. I had a few more nights up my sleeve because I didn't have to go to Sydney every night for training when I took up sailing. I mean, you can only watch so many sailing videos. And I joined the Labor Party, so I put up my hand to run for the seat of Gosford and my life's changed massively. And I think I used to be busy before as a full-time teacher and uh, running a Paralympic campaign and I'm living possibly 24 hours more a day than what I previously did and absolutely loving that as well. So no regrets. Just checking, are you an Australian citizen? <laughs> <laughs> I had a panic. Well, I was born in Brisbane, moved to New Zealand when I was three months old. My sister and my mum are Kiwis, and, I, and both my parents have passed. And I rang my sister and said, Sissy, is there something that we should know about? But no, <laughs> state government, you don't need to do that qualification. Oh, okay. so. Oh, right. <laughs> so, Daniel, um, you had this freak accident when you were 21 years of age, a young man in your prime. But uh, from there, you just, like Liesl, um, it's, it's onwards and upwards and uh, I'm going to achieve my dream. And what does the future hold for you now? Well, I mean, I just, I mean, I just enjoy sailing, Gordon, and, and it's like rugby, you have a passion for that. And I had an unfortunate accident. I was chasing the, the Olympic dream and um, I had an accident at a yacht club and, and like, I didn't really think about it. I just wanted to go yachting again. I just love it so much. And, and at that stage, the technology wasn't available for me, for my disability sailing again. But we developed it. We found a way. We used the systems at Alistair, like a lot of Ronsi and stuff. Like I worked in a marine chandlery and I knew about the systems and stuff. And we found a way to get me back sailing. And I just loved being back on the water again. And, and, and from there, we just... Um, went forwards and I just set goals and I just worked towards those goals and and the greatest instrument of motivation Gordon is, is setting goals and I just set long-term goals and, and work towards them and, and um, here I am with these legends and having such a great night and, and with such great people and such great um, memories so yeah no really amazing. And what about the little Fitz, Fitzgibbon. Um, have we got a, a future yeah, my, Olympic my, sailor my there? My beautiful wife, Kumi, and I've had a little daughter, Hannah, 
She's two years old. She's so cute. Um, <laughs> it's like um, when you're sailing, you're just focused on winning a gold medal and not stuffing up and having to deal with Liesl and all those things. <laughs> and, and <laughs> you, you Hang on. <laughs> no, <laughs> no Liesl is amazing. But you don't open your heart to anything else because your heart's based on that. And, and But since I've been finished sailing, I was coming home from Bunnings because that's what you do when you're retired. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> <laughs> or Aldi. Or Aldi. <laughs> and um, little Hannah had a little ha hot dog, which she get at, at, at Bunnings. And she's sitting in the back and she goes, Daddy, I'm happy. And it's like, oh, my heart's melting. And, and mm. just those things I didn't experience because when you're yacht racing, you're around the world all, all, all year and, and you don't really have the, the emotional capacity to to absorb, absorb it. So yeah, the 12 months has been great, Gordon. Well, thank you for sharing that story. And just finally, Liesl, um, the, the significance of you guys being inducted into the Australian Sailing Hall of Fame. I think we've had an amazing experience. When we first started sailing, we were these two people who used wheelchairs sitting in the corner of Royal Prince Alfred Yacht Club. And we won a gold medal up on the stage beside Nina Curtis at the Yacht Club and RPAs opened their hearts and opened their minds to including people with disabilities and set up amazing integrated disabled sailing program. Virginia Fitzgibbon decided he wanted a Sydney 38 with all sorts of adaptions on the back of it so he could just race the white boat against everyone else and when we set that up it was who knows what this is going to look like in the future and it's involved into the soldier on program and then Tommy Spittle leading the force out there with the Invictus Games and I think RPA set a standard of opening the Yacht Club to all sorts of opportunities and people with various disabilities and I think the PTSD that we're seeing in soldiers coming back when we go out with people who it's the first time they've left their house in 12 months it's a pretty amazing experience so I think in the future our opportunities to get out on the water are going to expand into all sorts of opportunities not so people with physical disabilities but also with lots of other disabilities that we can't see so thanks very much for having us up here it's pretty I don't know humbling to be sitting here amongst absolute legends and over to Fitzy. Just one thing about you sailing. <laughs> um, it's such an amazing sport that anyone can do it, whether you're young or you're old, able or disabled. And, and Bill Northern won a gold medal at 60 years old. He started sailing at 49. And that's just amazing to me that... Um, and I can go sailing just like anyone else. And that's the amazing sport we live in, we, we're involved with. And, and, and I don't think any other sport can match that. Liesl and Daniel, can I just say, if it's, if it's humbling for you, it is even more humbling for everyone in this room to share your wonderful inspiration and your achievement. Double gold medals, retiring Paralympic champions. Congratulations, and our hearts go with you for the future. Well done.